Hey friends, welcome. Uh, today we are going to discuss chemical potential and its application. And as we all know that chemical potential is written as mu or uh, it is also known as partial molar Gibbs free energy. So partial molar Gibbs free energy we can write it as dg upon dni or dg upon dni that will be equal to mu i or it can be also written as g bar i okay so this notation that is g bar was given by lewis and randall and uh, mu was given by gibbs now chemical potential it is nothing but it is the change in free energy with respect to number of moles or uh, rather we can define chemical potential as change in free energy of any system when we add one mole of that substance at constant temperature and pressure to any large system so the change in the free energy is known as gibbs free energy or it is known as chemical potential so let me explain by taking one example that uh, suppose we are having 100 ml of methanol and in that 100 ml of methanol or suppose in a beaker we are having 100 ml of methanol and in that 100 ml of methanol say we are adding say 1 ml or 1 ml of water so when we add 1 ml of water in 100 ml of methanol then we are adding very small quantity to a larger quantity or we can say it is 1000 ml of methanol and we are adding 1 ml of water in it so the amount of change in the free energy okay the amount of change in the free energy is known as the chemical potential okay so in any system when we are changing the composition and because of the change in the composition whatever the change either it may be a positive change in the free energy or it may be a negative change in the free energy so that change in the free energy with respect to the number of moles it is known as chemical potential and generally it is represented by mu or it can be also written by g bar so this chemical potential it is used to prove several laws like we have henry's law Raoult's law as well as uh, several Gibbs uh, adsorption isotherm then we have phase rule so uh, also various terms relating to fugacity various terms relating to activity so chemical potential has numerous uses and uh, we are also going to see two of its application we are going to uh, prove Henry's law and Raoult's law using chemical potential starting with the first application of chemical potential that is we will prove Henry's law and Henry's law we all know that when any gas it is dissolved in any solvent at a given temperature then the mole fraction of that gas is proportional to the pressure of the gas in the solution. So if we have any gas and that gas is dissolved in any solvent at a specific temperature then the mole fraction of that gas will be proportional to the pressure of that gas so suppose we are having a capsule and over here i am having any solvent say water or any solvent and over here i am having piston and this is occupied by say nitrogen or any other gas so the pressure over here or if I say P is the pressure and if I say X is the mole fraction then I can write pressure will be proportional to the mole fraction and this is nothing but it is Henry's law and this Henry's law we are going to prove by using chemical potential. So for any dissolved gas in the solution we can write its chemical potential if we use mu2 as a solvent and the chemical potential l i am using it here for in the liquid phase so mu2 in liquid phase will be equal to mu20 plus rt log of x2 okay so mu20 is the standard chemical potential at its standard state and x2 is the mole fraction of our gas in the liquid phase okay so now where x2 is the mole fraction of gas in the liquid phase or it is in the solution now for the gas that is above now this is 
for the gas which is in the liquid now the chemical potential for the gas which is above or which is above the solution that can be written as mu2 and g subscript we are writing it for gas will be equal to mu20 g plus rt log of p2 where p2 is the pressure of the gas our above our solution so and at equilibrium we know that under equilibrium condition the chemical potential in the solution is always equal to the chemical potential of the gas which is present or during equilibrium the chemical potential of both the phases or the chemical potential of same constituent in both the phases is always same so we can write the chemical potential that is mu 2 l so we can write at equilibrium at equilibrium mu 2 l will be equal to mu2 g so under equilibrium condition the chemical potential in both the phases are equal so we can equate both this equation and hence we can write mu02 l plus rt log of x2 will be equal to mu02 g plus rt log of p2 okay now we can we will rearrange this relation in the form of log of x2 so when we rearrange this relation in the form of log of x2 we can write log of x2 is equal to this will go on right hand side so we can write mu0 2g minus mu0 2l plus rt log of p2 and that will be divided by rt so rt will come this side further now what we can do is we will take rt this side and this rt this rt will be cancelled out and hence we can write log of x2 is equal to mu0 2g minus mu0 2l upon rt plus we can write log of p2 now over here all these terms are constant so this term are constant and all the terms like we have mu0 that is the chemical potential in the standard state mu0 chemical potential standard state r is our real gas constant and t is the temperature of the system so all these are constant and all these constants can be combined and i can write it as log of k so all the constants are combined and they, it is written as log of k plus we can write log of p2 and i can write log of x2 so we know that log of addition is a multiplication function and hence we can write log of kp2 so log of x2 will be equal to log of kp2 and if you remove the log we can write x2 is equal to kp2 or we can write x2 is proportional to p2 so hence we have proved that the mole fraction of or the mole fraction in the solution it is proportional to the pressure of gas so hence with the help of chemical potential we have proved henry's law this is one of the applications of chemical potential moving on to the next application that is raoult's law and raoult's law we all know that it states that relative lowering of the vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of solute so relative lowering it is generally written as uh, suppose if we consider that p1 and p2 they are the vapor pressures of pure solvent and the solutions respectively so p1 is the vapor pressure of our pure solvent and p2 is the vapor pressure of our solution and x2 is the mole fraction of our solute so x2 is the mole fraction of our solute then the relative lower pressure or uh, then the relative lowering in the vapor pressure it is given by p1 minus p2 upon p1 that is equal to x2 so this gives us the relative lowering of the vapor pressure that is p1 minus p2 upon p1 that is this is the relative lowering in the vapor pressure and this relative lowering in the vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solute so this we are going to prove it using chemical potential now we know that the chemical potential of the solute in a dilute solution it is given by mu i l we write it for in our solution 
इज इक्वल टू म्यू आई जीरो एल प्लस आर टी लॉग वन माइनस एक्स टू ओके नाउ वेर दिस वन माइनस एक्स टू इट इज नथिंग बट इट इज द मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ अवर सॉलवेंट हाउ इट केम वी नो दैट द टोटल मोल फ्रैक्शन एक्स वन प्लस एक्स टू कैन बी रिटर्न इज इक्वल टू वन सो वी कैन राइट एक्स वन इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस एक्स टू सो ओवर हियर वन माइनस एक्स टू इज नथिंग बट इट इज एक्स वन एंड दिस एक्स वन इज नथिंग बट इट इज अवर मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सॉलवेंट ओके एंड द केमिकल पोटेंशियल ऑफ द वेपर्स ऑफ द सॉलवेंट ओके द केमिकल पोटेंशियल ऑफ द वेपर्स ऑफ द सॉलवेंट इट इज गिवन बाय म्यू आई जी विल बी इक्वल टू म्यू आई जीरो जी प्लस आर टी लॉग पी टू एज वी नो दैट दिस इज और वी आर कंसिडरिंग डायल्यूट सॉल्यूशन सो पी टू इज अवर वेपर प्रेशर और पी टू इज द वेपर प्रेशर ऑफ अवर सॉल्यूशन सो ओवर हियर वी विल यूज पी टू ओके अंडर इक्विलिब्रियम कंडीशन वी नो दैट द केमिकल पोटेंशियल इन द सॉल्यूशन फेज विल बी इक्वल टू द केमिकल पोटेंशियल ऑफ द कंपोनेंट्स इन द गैसेस फेज सो बोथ दिस टर्म्स विल बी इक्वल एंड हेंस वी कैन राइट म्यू आई एल विल बी इक्वल टू म्यू आई जी एंड वेन वी सब्सटीट्यूट बोथ दिस टर्म्स देन वी कैन राइट म्यू आई जीरो एल प्लस आर टी log of 1 minus x2 is equal to mu 0 ig plus rt log of p2 now suppose if we consider that we are taking pure solvent so when we are taking pure solvent at that time x2 will be equal to 0 x2 is nothing but it will be the mole fraction of the solute and when we are considering that our solution or we are taking pure solvent x2 will be equal to 0 and p2 that is the vapor pressure of the solution will be equal to p1 that is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent that we are taking so when we are considering that we are taking our pure solvent then x2 will be equal to 0 because nothing is present in there and hence x2 will be equal to 0 and p2 is the vapor pressure of the solution so that vapor pressure will be equal to the vapor pressure of our pure solvent so when we substitute both these terms that is x2 will be equal to 0 so this will be 0 this will be log of 1 and log of 1 we know it is 0 so whole term will be equal to 0 and this will remain as such and p2 will become p1 okay so hence uh, we can write mu i 0 l will be equal to mu i 0 g plus rt log of p1 okay because when x2 is equal to 0 so this whole term will become 0 and in place of p2 we will substitute p1 so we will have this particular term now mu i 0 l value we have so this value we will again substitute in our above equation so we will substitute this value in this particular relation over here so we will have mu i 0 g plus r t log p 1 plus r t log 1 minus x2 and that is equal to mu i 0 g plus rt log p2 so both these terms will be cancel out and what we will do is we will take this p1 term on right hand side so we will have rt log of 1 minus x2 will be equal to आर टी लॉग ऑफ पी टू माइनस आर टी लॉग ऑफ पी वन एंड एज वी नो दैट लॉग ऑफ सब्सट्रैक्शन इज अ डिविजन फंक्शन सो वी कैन राइट आर टी वी कैन टेक कॉमन सो आर टी लॉग वी कैन राइट पी टू अपॉन पी वन सो वील हैव आर टी लॉग ऑफ वन माइनस एक्स टू इज इक्वल टू दिस आर टी बोथ हैंड साइड वी कैन कैंसल इट आउट and we can remove log from both hand sides so we can write 1 minus x2 will be equal to p2 upon p1 what we can do is 
we will take 1 on right hand side and multiply whole equation by minus so first we will have minus x2 will be equal to p2 by p1 minus 1 and then we will multiply this equation by say minus so we will have x2 will be equal to 1 minus p2 by p1 okay now further if we just simplify it we will have x2 is equal to p1 minus p2 upon p1 and this is nothing but it is our Raoult's law so hence we have proved Raoult's law using chemical potential or using chemical potential in the same way we can also derive Gibbs adsorption isotherm phase rules and several other uh, derivations like fugacity activity using chemical potential finally we can say that chemical potential it is nothing but it is the change in the free energy of the system when we are adding one mole of any constituent in that system so free energy may increase or free energy may decrease and this change in the free energy is nothing but it is our chemical potential hope the topic is clear thank you very much